Making absolute claims of truth. Claiming that you know absolutely and completely what something means, what something is, what the universe is, how things work in every way, shape and form. You have been touched by something, a divine source or something equally as powerful to manipulate the followers, the believers, to get them to donate and support and offer their time and effort. Absolute truth as a tool for domination, or possibly a level of psychosis or narcissism, which makes you believe that your goals are just, perhaps a form of frontal lobe epilepsy, making you believe you're in contact with spiritual beings, gods and other such creatures and forms and entities, believing that your truth is true through delusion or through manipulation. Whether you believe or not, whether you're a dominator or not, whether you're a person who believes that their truth is the truth or not, Imposing a false positive, the idea of God, for example, a particular kind of God being an absolute, an absolute assured version of reality, saying that there must be a devil just because. There must be this truth simply because it is written in the book, or because your guru has said so, or because God has told you, or your spirit guide has told you, or your angel has told you, or your jinn has told you, or whatever. Believing that you're more empowered than you actually are, that you're in the absolute truth, whether a projection, a lie, or simply a personal truth. It can work either way. Either way, in either case, absolute truth claims are a serious and obvious religious cult trait. Any cult requires blind obedience. A cultic system is centralised around the leadership and around the policies which are made to enforce the leadership as being the dominating force. They use the beliefs, the ideas, to essentially thought reform people, to have blind obedience to a particular ideological constraint. That's how cults operate. They tell you particular so-called truths. They make you believe those truths. Obey. You obey because you're told it's the truth, because your guru, or your cult leader, or your educator, or whichever term they use. They tell you it's the truth, and you believe it's the truth, and therefore you must obey because it is the truth, the one and only. No matter how ridiculous it may seem to everyday people, because you're believing in it, because you're feeding into the idea, you become blindly obedient. And don't get me wrong, this is not just in fringe elements of particular beliefs. This is also within mainstream religion, the idea that you must obey. It's very often more subtle, more gentle. But in cults, it's in the purest form, the most focused and organised form, where you have absolutely no room for manoeuvre. Surrounded by fellow followers, isolating yourself from friends and family, you obey blindly, without reservation. In religion you have a bit more breathing room, give or take. And those religions which do not give you breathing room, in which you must obey, blindly, blind faith is seen as a good thing, well those religions are just cults. Fundamentalists, 
young earth creationists, literalists of the Bible or the Quran. It is a cultic element. The idea of a destiny, a fate for humanity which your belief outlines as being inevitable, as being the absolute truth which you will reach. It is either said to be an absolute truth or it is a must. The idea of a doomsday perhaps or heaven on earth being created, 2012 apocalypses or whatever whether used as fear tactics or as a hope for a better future and very often both. Usually cult mentalities believe that they have the idea, the way in which humanity must progress. When you get beyond simple political or religious rhetoric of a greater hope, you get into the full cultic view that it is a must. It is the destination of humanity to be in a certain way. It is the inevitable cause and consequence of your particular God's creation that there must be a destruction and all the bad people are going to be taken away and you're going to be raptured to heaven. Or whichever of you, it is an idea of fate. Any idea in which the future is predicted, said to be so, and it is not based upon fact or anything of any real rational kind, it's based upon belief, theory, which is not supported by fact. The idea that because, oh yes, of course, our belief is true and we know the truth because our guru has told us, that must be the one, the only, the absolute truth. The idea of fate. The idea of the end justifying the means. We would hope to be a positive process. You have to do this to do that. You know, simple religious practices. But no. All too often, when we use this term, we actually mean where people are willing to do anything for the sake of their belief. For the sake of their leader. For the sake of the cult mentality which is created. You need look no further than the Crusades. Islamic terrorism, the Holocaust, the Stalinist purges, or anything else. What could create this system? What could allow these crimes against humanity to take place? The idea within a cult mentality, a brainwashed state of mind which says the end justifies the means. With extremist levels of communism, the idea that anything can be done in the name of what would be created in the future, a perfect world of true equality. The idea within religion that certain non-believers or certain alternative believers should be punished, tortured and purged. The idea that the Western world is somehow evil and certain corrupted elements of Islam use that idea as propaganda to make people attack, to make people do harm to others. The pro-life Christians in America, certain radical elements of it, which decide to try and kill doctors and blow up abortion clinics in the name of what's right, what they believe to be right. They believe the end justifies the means, even if they're going against their own laws and rules laid down by their leaders or by their God. They're willing to break those particular guidelines, those particular principles in order to justify the end, justify the end result, the destiny, the fate 
of the people. They believe by doing their action they are not committing a crime because God would surely forgive them because they're attacking a alternative believer, an alternative thinker, a person with a different ideology. Or perhaps they believe that it's necessary to execute millions of Jewish people with free up resources and give Nazi Germany breathing room. Perhaps they believe that. Disgusting beliefs, though they are, whether religious or political, their occult mentality, a belief that the end result is worth fighting for, worth killing for, and as with the case of Heaven's Gate and the Jim Jones cult, worth killing yourself for and your families, your friends. That's how far and how deep the cult mentality really goes. Whether we talk about actual warfare, terrorism, infighting, aggression of the individual or the group towards particular individuals and groups, conflict between races, nationalities, certain ethnic groups, political ideologies fighting out and they are holier than thou. They believe that they are the one with the truth. Carrying out a level of conflict, otherwise known as warfare, between different groups. It's not only a religious thing, it's also a political thing. Declaring a truthful war, a righteous war, a holy war. And in this case, and in this event, almost anything can be justified depending upon the belief of the followers. If they believe they can justify certain elements, certain perspectives within their followers, and those followers believe fundamentally and fanatically enough, anything can be justified because it is a righteous conflict.